that, what is it that people don't understand or don't get right about the future? I think people have been seduced into thinking that the advance in information technology is going to bring more change to the future than I think it is. Why do I say this? I think because if you look at Moore's Law, the fundamental increase in a IC, a integrated circuit, it's been going for about 50 years, which means there's about 10 billion fold change in the computing power. There's lots of things that over that 10 billion fold increase have gotten enormously better. But there's lots of things that haven't changed at all. So I ask people, when you think about Moore's Law and its changes in your life, is your marriage any better? <laughs> and, you know, most people say, well, sometimes I can call on Skype when I'm out of town. But mostly people think, and the evidence says, people's marriages are no better than they were before 10 billion fold. And if 10 billion fold increase didn't bring uh, about a better marriage, the 100 billionth fold, the trillionth fold is unlikely to do so. So I think there's a whole bunch of phenomena that are just fundamentally human and fundamentally social that keep, people keep expecting technology to be the fix for. And I've been married a long time, uh, happily most of it. And when people say, you know, I, I want to say, look, if someone comes to you and says, you know, you've got this dispute in your marriage, if you could just map exactly the time devoted by each of you to each task so the tasks were divided fairly, then your marriage would be happy, I would say spend that money on a marriage on a divorce lawyer <laughs> because that's not going to fix it. So I think there's this imagination that Moore's Law, having not yet in 10 billion fold improvement in computing power solved problems, is somehow going to solve problems with the next little thing. People have been, I remember in 1964 when they rolled a TV into my classroom to show an instructional video and convinced me that this was the revolution that would transform education in the future. They've been saying it since I was a baby. Education's gotten fundamentally no better in the United States in the years they've been introducing wave after technology, wave after technology. There are just some fundamental things that I think are human and are going to stay human, and I think technology is not going to save us. What do you think about that question? What do you think about the future? And is there something you think people have wrong or something you th think is right people haven't seen yet? I think that the, the fundamental question about technology from the point of view of development mm. is its diffusibility. Mm. The question is, what does it take for, an, for a technology to diffuse? Now, we've seen, for example, in India, there's 200% penetration of cell phones. Mm -hmm. There's 6% penetration of landlines. Hmm. So landlines never diffuse. In Kenya, there's 81% penetration of cell phones. There's 26% penetration of electricity. Wow. So uh, there are technologies that don't diffuse and technologies that diffuse super rapidly. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we, wish, we want more of the technologies to diffuse than the ones that don't diffuse. And I think that the reason why technologies don't diffuse is for two things. One is, what is their fixed cost? If their fixed cost is high, we get into these traps that because you're poor, you're not going to use much of the service, mm -hmm. so it doesn't pay me to hook you up. But if I don't hook you up, you don't have access to technology, and hence you're unproductive and poor. Hmm. So, so that's one. And the other one is, how complicated is the ecosystem hmm. to to absorb that, that you need in order for technology to make sense. You know, in order to make sense of, say, a TV remote control, well, you need to have a TV, right? And you need to have electricity, and you need to have somebody providing broadcast television and so on. Otherwise, this technology, the remote control, is not useful. Uh, you know, in order to have ways, you have to need people with smartphones and you have to need people with credit cards. So you need other technologies to have diffused in order for this one mm. to diffuse. So the big question is, the technologies of the future, will they require fewer things, like maybe a 3D printer, you just hook it up, you download whatever form is from, from the cloud, and then it just produces, and, and you need simpler forms of organization, and then it can diffuse like cell phones? Or is it going to be the Internet of Things, where everything is sort of super connected and so on and so forth? Mm. So it will diffuse in only very few places, and only those places will be able to gain the benefits of that technology and reconcentrate the world. So I think that that uncertainty, will technologies be more or less diffusible, mm. 
it will have a huge impact on what the nature of that future is so going to be. You used a key phrase, reconcentrate the world, because it could be technologies make the world more unequal by yeah. concentrating the winners get more productive and there's a, there's a virtuous circle for the winners and a vicious circle for the losers from technology. Exactly. That's very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you guys. guys.